Hi there, fellow Sonic Sailors, and welcome to yet another episode in Sound Paint. In today's video, we're going to go deep into our steel drum. We were fortunate to get one of the best steel drums in the world and deep sample it. So when you play on any given key, you get 127 dynamic velocity layers of the steel drum. It's such a beautiful, wonderful instrument. And if you're familiar with the steel drum, it's commonly played with these sort of small beaters, they're called, which is a form of mallet. But we took it further. So it's not just that you have 127 dynamic velocity layers per key using the beaters, but you also have three different types of mallets. We recorded with brushes and with felt mallets and with hands as well. So there's four different sort of articulation types of the steel drum, which is far expansive compared to the normal instrument. In addition, we also recorded rolls for all the different mallets. So both for the beaters and the hands and the felt mallets and the brushes, you can play natural rolls as well. All that with the power of sound paint really just creates this buttery, super sonic, soundtracky kind of instrument. It has a very sort of soulful tone to it. There's also a funny backstory to the steel drum. As you may be aware, the steel drum is made from steel drums or old oil barrels that were sort of modified. And I think sometimes we think of instruments as like they have to be pristine and a Stradivarius or Steinway piano or whatever. But sometimes found instruments bring something new to the world. You know, who doesn't remember the cantina scene in Star Wars, for example, where John Williams so brilliantly used steel drums in the soundtrack and an old Moog synthesizer, just really brilliant. And it has that sort of Caribbean vibe to it. Very popular in EDM music still. It's an instrument that seems to be standing the test of time. But there's also another interesting aspect to the steel drum that's always sort of been in my mind. And it is that the steel drum actually gave birth to a variety of other instruments as well. The steel drum is what you call concave in essence, so it bends down in the steel drum. But you have other instruments that were generated later with the same concept that are convex, meaning the opposite in terms of shape. For example, the infamous hang drum. The story goes that the guy who made the hang drum actually used to make steel drums in the Caribbean. And whoever makes steel drums in the Caribbean is like treated more or less like a god. So he took that concept and reversed it, and out of that came the hang drum and the kaiser drum and many other of these sort of new hang drum kind of types. We have them in sound paint as well. And you can clearly hear the homage to the grandfather of it all, which is the beautiful steel drum. So in this video here, we're just gonna go back in time and really appreciate what a steel drum really sounds like, what it feels like, what it's about when you have 127 dynamic velocity layers per key using a near infinite amount of round robins as well. It's really like playing the real thing. And again, with four different kind of brushes as well. So we're expanding the sonic territory. And as always with sound paint, you also have infinite amount of ranges on the keys. So you can play it as a bass instrument. You can play it up here as well. But the best thing is that I'm not gonna play it. Nicolas Semrat dropped by to take this thing for a spin and I just can't wait to show you. Um, I have nothing further to add actually. Let's just check it out. Jonathan 
different scales, you know him? It's like a super sick, like, I, I think it's steel drum, jazz steel drum. But here, just hearing like, like that kind of stuff on steel is crazy because there's no like, it doesn't seem like there's like a, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. I'm sure there's an order to where you. that thing. I'm sorry, steel drum players. I don't know how to phrase your <laughs> instrument at all. You know what? In a way, um, you're playing something that doesn't exist in reality either. <laughs> yeah, There's yeah. no steel drums with like five octaves <laughs> below it, you know. Yeah, what's normally? Is it like two or something? Oh, it's very limited. The, the natural range is probably where your fingers are about right now. Roughly. Oh, like down. <laughs> so then, this is one of those where like you start playing the sound and you do something accidentally and then it changes what you think the sound should be mm. like i like accidentally I, the mod wheel triggered at the bottom and so it like it did like a side chain thing i was like oh no i want to hear that
I also like, I mean, I'm one of these, like, I like when you hear something, like, kind of weird. Like, I like that. That thing's nasty for some reason. What catch was that? <laughs> Glass clouds. I like how the, the octaves are like. It's like not quite in time, but like enough to like infer it. not how that one was intended on being played but I'm cool with it.
Like Simrad before and after. Oh, it gives me way more notes. <laughs> cool. You feel like songs to that? Did you go through all of them? We can go to the guitar if you like feel. There's still a couple of okay. How are you in time, by the way? Do you feel good taking, playing a guitar as well? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't want to torture you too much.
like a weird concert I would go to in like college. Like they'd bring them into the college. <laughs> trick too on sometimes on patches like this it's like how much stuff could i take off before i get to like the uh, the harmony part the harmonic part with and still keep it like kind of out Sports. That like mistaked its way into something really mm. cool. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the last steel drum. Oh, that's beautiful, man. Mm -hmm. 